Oh, great. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Oh, finally, finally. Welcome back, super friends and super family. My name is Nick, and today I'm reacting to Heartstopper, season one, episodes five and six. So I was kind of talking about some of my favorite characters at the end of the last reaction. And besides, you know, Harry, Imogen, and Ben, um, after those top three characters, I think the next favorite that I have... <laughs> Imagine if this is the first reaction to Heartstopper someone has watched so far and they actually think I'm being serious right now. They just click off the video, instant dislike. No, obviously I'm being sarcastic. Hate those characters. At least right now. Imogen, I feel like, you know, she seems a little bit out of touch, but maybe she's just crazy in love with Nick. But speaking of Nick, I actually think that he is my favorite character, you know, and that's just because Nick is such an awesome name and yeah, no other reason. No, but I... <laughs> I think that Nick, like, he, he's shown a few moments where he's just really, really mature. There's a moment that I didn't talk about that is actually one of my favorite moments with Nick, but it's the moment where Tao throws um, Harry, uh, you know, being a bully, just a straight-up bully, you know, throws the ball at Tao, the rugby ball. And then Nick asks for it back, Tao doesn't want to give it back, and then when Nick is walking away, which is already a pretty cool thing, right, he realizes, like, no need to make a big deal about this thing, right? Then Tao throws the ball at Nick. And that, to me, that is the biggest thing where I'm like, Tao, are you are you for real, dude? Like, I totally understand if you hate Harry's guts. But first of all, you know that Charlie and Nick are, you know, good friends at the very least. And on top of that, like, he didn't do it. You, you know what I mean? It's not like Nick was even laughing. It's not like Nick was in the background, like, snickering when you got hit with the ball or something like that. Like, he's trying to be cool about it, right? His friends are jerks. His teammates are jerks. But, you know, then Tal just throws the ball at Nick's back. But I really, the moment where Nick just, I, I actually thought there was going to be like a little bit of a scuffle or a heated exchange and it was going to kind of maximize the drama because then Charlie was going to have to be like, oh shoot, you know, I like Nick, but Nick was upset at Tal and you can kind of understand both sides to a certain extent. But no, Nick instead just like walks away. Right? You know what I mean? And that's that's him being the bigger man. So that was one of my favorite moments with him. And then there's just a few things throughout where he's really... I mean, it makes sense because he's older than Charlie too, but... He just has shown, shown some maturity, I feel like, out of all the characters, and I appreciate that, while still feeling his age. You know, it's, it's not like he feels like he's in his mid-20s and therefore he's acting more mature. You know, he feels mature for someone going to high school who's well-balanced but just going through a lot of conflicted things, you know. But obviously I like Charlie a lot. I mean, he's very relatable. He's like the shy, kind of introverted kid who really just, you know, I also like his moment in the first episode where his sister, I still really, really hope we see more of her, but when when he's talking about his dream guy you know it's like he's just like someone to laugh with it's like that is a great response for pretty much anyone you know looking for a relationship at least in my opinion it's like who do you look for in a partner in a girlfriend in a boyfriend right someone who can laugh you can laugh with be yourself with you know plus the the moment in the first episode was very satisfying where uh charlie like stood up to ben finally and said how he really felt you know in that kind of confrontation moment and I really hope we see more of that moving forward, like some more, you know, I hope as Charlie gets older and matures and gains some more self-confidence, he learns to stand up for himself more, you know, and maybe Nick, who does have more confidence and more of just that, um, you know, classic strength, he can be inspired by that. He can be lifted up to that level. But I'm excited to get into more episodes. As always, if you want to watch along the full unedited reaction and support the channel, that is up on Patreon. You can also watch future episodes. I'll be done with the show at this point here on YouTube. So if you don't want to wait, you want to sign up you can see the final episodes of season one uh, that's more than enough talking for me once again let's just get right into it heartstopper season one episodes five and six <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> monopoly great game thank you who's winning the monopoly cheat you can't cheat in monopoly <laughs> <laughs> That was the smart move right there. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, Monopoly. I don't know if I've played a game Monopoly that has officially ever ended. You just have to call it quits at some point. I just don't like Nick. If they say anything mean to Charlie, going to crush them. How exactly? Verbally. <laughs> Verbally, okay. Should I perhaps interpret if done? <laughs> She's like, yeah, go back to the gossip. <laughs> Do I even want to know? <laughs> I was thinking of inviting Nick to my birthday thing on Saturday. Come on, Ta Ta, you gotta give Nick a chance. Don't just like lump him into like all jocks or jerks. How about our date? Cancel. So I wasn't sure if 
Oh, is she crying? My dog died last night. Oh, oh, she's crying about something else. Bad time to break the news. This is the worst week ever. Dang, okay, now how does he cancel? So unlucky. Give me belly any time to get you a present. You don't have to get me a present. No, I am gonna. I'm serious. You guys are gonna get caught, I swear. <laughs> Imogen told me you're meeting up on Saturday, like... I don't understand how he is so, so invested in this guy's dating life. Like, Harry, what is your deal, man? Boys, boys, watch this. What are you doing? Are you best friends with these weird little attention. Just stop picking on people for no reason. Yes. Life must be really hard when your only personality trait is Rich Bellend. <laughs> well said, well said. Yeah, I've done that. What do you mean? I know you're trying to help, but you're making things worse. No, I think that's good he stood up for himself, honestly. Can't possibly hurt your new best friend, Nick Nelson. He is so concerned, though. You can see it. What's up? I said I'd go on a date with this girl to go to Charlie's birthday party on the same day. Oh, it's the same day? How would you like this girl? Her dog died. That's not a yes. <laughs> that's not a yes. I didn't want to upset her when she was already crying about her dog. Oh, okay. Give some good advice, Olivia Coleman. You shouldn't go out with someone just because you feel sorry for them. Don't worry. The right girl will come along. Just you wait. Okay, so she doesn't know. I actually thought she knew. You came. Happy birthday. I said you didn't have to get me any. But of course he was going to. Am I the first one here? No, you're actually the last. <laughs> the sweet, he was waiting for him. He was waiting there. And you know Tal. Sorry in advance if he said anything rude to you. <laughs> Probably a good disclaimer, honestly. Can you at least try to get to know him? Try. <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> He's channeling the force. Nice, nice. I'm honestly not surprised. I'm just gonna go find the bathroom. I'm gonna go talk to him. Okay. Oh, it's his birthday. I have to. What do you mean? What is he gonna talk to him about? Don't make this. I mean, this is Charlie's birthday. It's his day. You need to stop this thing with Nick Nelson. No, no, worst advice ever. Can you get me your coat? I'll pay. I'll also accept a can of coat. If you're paying. <laughs> he offered to pay for one person, not everyone. It's like when you offer a stick of gum and everyone needs one. <laughs> it doesn't even like Harry basically risking everything by hanging out with me. Oh, I hope he doesn't miss here. Something bad. And now you're gonna tell me I'm just being jealous. Just don't like seeing him mess with you. He's not, man. If he is even slightly mean to you, you'll murder him. I know. I mean, that's nice to be protective, Tao, but I don't think this was smart or considerate to do on his birthday. I'm surprised he didn't get out of there quick. <laughs> that meant so much for him to overhear that and the way that Charlie talked about him, right? Okay, that didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go either. I thought it was going to be much worse. Nice! How is this going to go? Good game. Good game. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I will not tolerate it. So consider this your final warning. You're right. What do you mean you're right? He's not right. You're a good friend. I know. I kind of overheard you and Tao in the bathroom earlier. Wow, I'm surprised he's telling him. You actually went on a date with her. Her dog died. I felt really bad for her. That's so cool. He just completely says everything. It's not like we're officially dating or anything. But unofficially, kind of. Tell her I don't like her like that. I wish I'd met you when I was younger. Why? I wish I'd known then what I know now. Mm, okay. Are you gonna open my present then? I kind of want to see your reaction. Where did he get him? I genuinely didn't have time. Not a book, but it looks kind of like a book. So. Oh wow, okay. One of my favorite days ever. They said this is Charlie's best birthday ever. You like me? Wasn't that obvious? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Do you like me? Yes. <laughs> Why are we like this? Because you're young. <laughs> I want to kiss you so bad right now. I want to. I mean, if Tao saw this, he would know, right? What is he texting? Oh, I, th I would have thought he sorted that out before he even came to this party. Oh, dang! No one's around there to celebrate with him. So maybe there is some chemistry there. Dang, I actually didn't think that. She looks sad though for a second there, right? Ooh, how is this gonna go? How bad will this be? Sorry about yesterday. It's okay. She looks so sad, but you just have to tell her the truth. You're a really nice person, but I don't like you like that. Okay, okay. Do you ever feel like you're only doing things because everyone else is? I feel like she can relate to this as well. I think I get it, for being honest. 
Dang, she took that way, way better and way differently than I expected. Maybe she's just kind of caught in the wrong crowd herself, you know? So, how was your day? Here we go. That was interesting, those two birds at the end. What did that symbolize? Mamma mia. Well, we've seen that four times this year already. Oh, well, I don't know. You think... <laughs> Mamma mia. Is this how he's trying to tell his mom though? I feel like, right? Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, the first one is amazing, right? That sounds good. Let me. It's kind of sweet, like they have movie night together, you know, mom and son. I know they're rough. I, I mean, yes. That scene must have been inspired with Han and Leia from Empire, no? I'm oh, so maybe he is. Is that what he's realizing? Thanks to Kira Knightley? This is a conversational lunchtime gathering we've got going on. I mean, it's social media. There's always at least one nasty comment. It's unavoidable. I'm texting town again. Interesting. Interesting. In what are you implying? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> he definitely doesn't like me back. You don't know that. Talk about something else. Boy. <laughs> Which I think, Nozzle. <laughs> oh my god, he just he just doesn't stop. Throw something at me again. Like your last remaining brain cell? <laughs> Not only is he a bull like an over-the-top bully, but he's like the worst bully, you know what I mean? Like in the sense that his comebacks are horrible, he just embarrasses himself. Got locked in and had our first kiss. Are you okay? Both late for rehearsal. Oops. There's still one person that doesn't know where it comes from. Only person in a 50 mile radius. I mean, to be fair, she probably is just not even on social media and is oblivious about her students' personal lives. Never would have guessed that you were gay, but we're cool and brave of you. I mean, that person is being nice, no? She's so gross. Lesbians are so disgusting. Oh my gosh. Yeah, what is their problem? Why do you have leftover cheese? Always pays to be prepared with anti homophobia cheese. <laughs> I mean, carrying cheese around, probably a good idea. It's a good snack, right? How did you realize you were gay? I guess I've always been sort of aware of it. Poor Nick, nothing is simple for him. Sorry for being all confused. I thought I was the one who said sorry too much. Oi. And now they're both saying sorry too much, right? Do you want to kiss? <laughs> Who is that? Just random people? When's the concert? Can I come? What? Why? What do you think? <laughs> you don't have to come. You probably got- But he wants to. You and Charlie getting along well then? Yeah. Can she tell? We're sort of going out. Oh, dang, dang. Please don't tell anyone, though. No, of course. Yeah, she won't. When we were 13, I thought boyfriend and girlfriend forever. Yep, so did I. I mean, how many thoughts are just insane when you're 13? <laughs> A couple of people already know. <laughs> <laughs> we're here all day if you want to meet us for lunch. That'd be nice. By the end of this, Nick is going to have totally different friends, right? He's going to quit rugby or something. Lunch with your boyfriend today. I'm waiting for your mum, actually. <laughs> He just fails every time. He really does. I'm not really out yet. Do you want to be? No, I, I don't know. think he does. They all maybe he just doesn't know. Okay. Being out is hard. A lot of people will see you in a different way. It is a lot to deal with. That was an interesting close up there on Darcy, as Tara said that. Kissing you is actually one of the things that made me realize I don't like kissing cards. Okay. Don't take it personal. <laughs> does it feel good to have told someone? Yeah. Okay. Oh, finally, finally, she's back. Man, it's been way too long. I didn't realize you were in a committed relationship. What? We're not... <laughs> Guilty. So, not ready to tie the knot yet. <laughs> Her appearances are way too brief in this show, man. She needs to be more in season two. You are staring. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. Do your homework. I mean, honestly, good luck focusing on your homework hanging out, you guys. <laughs> I told her, just force yourself because I'm out or anything. No. no. Before it starts, like a double date. I've never been on a date. Well, this is a first for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. Not yet. I think Tao likes L as well. I feel like even if they don't say anything, I feel like they'll pick up on it pretty quickly, though. The heck place is this? It's like an outdoor tent place. Tal came along as a package deal. You're lucky to have me. Cute little pair. Don't push them too fast. <laughs> they both just turned down to their milkshakes. But no one drive. Make sure you take an Uber. Carefully, you guys. No, that is a crime. Cannot believe you're disrespecting bubblegum flavor in front of me. I mean, that would not be my choice. After we'd kissed like six times? It was two, but sure. <laughs> she keeps exaggerating the same way every time she tells the story. You seem really good together. I think it's because we're friends too. Seems obvious, but you should be a really good friend. I'm not hinting at anything, not hinting at all. Tao, 
Can you come help us carry the glasses? Yeah. What are you doing? Setting you up. You like it, but I don't want him to know that. My friendship with him is more important. Things will change. I don't want anything else to change. I get that. Not always for the better. Oh, dang, she's hurt by her saying that. Not interrupting anything, am I? Um, what? Well, uh... No boys allowed conversation. Did you know this too? The entire thing? We were aware, yes. So this whole thing was just a settle? No, absolutely. No, don't take this the wrong way like that. A triple date. You and Charlie? Yeah. <gasps> Charlie! I mean, honestly, she couldn't have tell. She couldn't tell before. Happy for you too, but you didn't have to witness all the months of intense pining. <laughs> <laughs> Do oh no, Tao! Don't feel like you're the odd man out. What about Tao? I'm gonna tell him. I just need to find the right time. To anyone who doesn't know. Well, now, as of two seconds ago, you didn't know either. Um. But you do want to tell him soon. Once it's starting in 15 minutes. Oh. I don't know if I would chug the full milkshake before performing. <laughs> I really love you. Oh, I love you too. That's so hard when you want to say, no, I don't just love you like that. Tara, Darcy, hurry up, you're late. Wait, hold on. This is just the rehearsal? Where's the whole audience? Girls, can I have less chatting, more tuning, please? Thank you. Or they're just here early? The lesbian disease. <laughs> oh my gosh. We've been hanging out a lot. And if you will guess, we were together. Uh, Has anyone seen Tara and Darcy? Dang, it's just hard for Tara, right? I just want some peace and quiet. The door! Oh no! Oh great, are they really gonna miss the concert? <sighs> oh no. Call someone, just call someone, right? Call Charlie, he'll let you out. My signal. Oh. Okay. I'm not loud and confident about being a lesbian. Honestly, just stay offline. It's just uh, not a pleasant place. I just want to live my life. Probably better than the concert, no? I think it'll get easier. Yeah, I'm sure it will, right? Okay, they will make it to the show. <laughs> the teacher is probably so stressed out right now. Thanks, boy, I kiss one time. Girl, I kiss one time. You gonna be okay? Just catch your breath so you can play. <laughs> He immediately crosses his arms when Nick sits down. <laughs> Alright, so that is Heartstopper Season 1, Episodes 5 and 6. So we had quite a few developments in these last two episodes. I mean, obviously in Episode 5, we had Charlie and his birthday, and it was really cool. I mean, I thought that... I really thought things were going to go badly in a few different ways. I thought either Nick was going to go on his date with Imogen and miss the party, or that he was going to overhear Tao and... Charlie speaking in the bathroom and things were going to go badly due to that. But it actually ended up the opposite of that. You know, not only did he go to Charlie's birthday and it was a great birthday, you know, like I said, probably Charlie's best birthday so far in life. Definitely going to be one of his top highlights. But then on top of that, we had Nick over here, Tao. And I, I totally, look, I totally get that Tao is coming from a good place. Like he really just is trying to be protective of Charlie because he's missed, he, he doesn't trust Nick, right? And you can understand why he doesn't trust Nick. I do still feel like he's being a little bit too quick and eager to judge Nick just because of the crowd he hangs out with. But at the same time, you can understand, right? Getting bullied, it just, it's very easy to be angry and to kind of associate that whole group of people as one. And at the end of the day, he is concerned about Charlie and just doesn't want him to get hurt by Nick. But that ended up being a really uh, meaningful moment for Nick kind of overhearing Charlie speak to Tao and basically express like how much Nick means to him in that moment. Right. And then I thought that once again, Nick did something really, really mature. I mean, with a little help from his mom's advice, who is still uh, still completely oblivious at this point in the show. But, you know, he had a good, really good conversation with Imogen, you know, that went about as well as it could under the circumstances. I thought that it was really cool of him to meet her in person, to have that conversation as opposed to just texting her, you know, to kind of really explain it in a thoughtful way. And on top of that, you know, what did surprise me about her character is the way that she took Nick being so honest about it. And even in the scene afterwards where they show Imogen and Nick together hanging out and being really friendly in a cool way after that conversation. You know, I really think that Imogen is probably very similar to Nick, you know, and she really knows what it's like to be going along with the popular crowd just because you yourself are scared not to belong in that crowd. And it's difficult to kind of break free and be your own person in high school. You know, kind of the big development for these two episodes, at least one of the big ones, is L and Tao and 
L realizing, um, you know, and sometimes that happens, right? Like sometimes you immediately know like it was with Charlie seeing Nick. It's like immediately he just felt that, right? But it seems like with L and Tao, it's a very different situation. It's one of those classic situations where you have two people who have been friends forever. And then you get to a certain point where one of them is like, oh my gosh, I have feelings beyond friendship, right? I haven't experienced that specific thing myself, but I've, I, I know several people who have, right? Who start off as good friends before they end up being in a relationship. And oftentimes that can be a great relationship, but it is complicated, obviously. I mean, right, you're friends with someone forever. How do you just say, and it is a risk, like fun. I feel like you have to say something eventually. At least that would be my general uh, Dr. Phil advice. You know, if someone was sitting down, I'm like, what do you think you should do? I think at the end of the day, you're going to regret not saying something eventually. But you, it is, there is a risk that even if you don't ruin the friendship, it does change things forever, right? Especially if only one of those people feel that way. Now, me watching the show, you know, like I was even wondering, did I miss in episode one? I oftentimes miss things that are very obvious in movies and TV shows. Anyone who's been watching my reactions knows this about me. But I was like, did they date already? Are they dating? You know, I, I honestly sense something I feel like from the very first episode between Tao and L. And so now, you know, L, I'm sure she's concerned. Like, does Tao have any feelings for me? I would bet money personally that he 100% does. But we'll see. I could be wrong. There's always a small percentage chance, but my money is 100% that they both like each other. And it's just a matter of overcoming that obstacle, that awkward obstacle in the way of saying, like, I like you as a friend, but I also like you on a whole other level. You know, and then we just had a, f a few of the regular, you know, we have Harry being <laughs> the most failed bully of all time. I mean, I don't know if I could think of a bully. You know, he's like that classic high school movie bully, right? But I don't know if I can think of one offhand who is that miserable at being a, an effective bully. I feel like most movie bullies, you know, they're strong, they're big, they push people around, they have, you know, really biting insults, even if they're dumb, you know what I mean? They usually have the upper hand with the other characters, but in this, it's like, first of all, he looks pretty small to be a rugby player, I will just say. It's like, wasn't he trash-talking Charlie earlier for playing rugby? And I just see him standing next to Tao, and I'm like, if I was going to tackle you on the rugby field, like, that would not make me nervous, Harry, like at all. On top of that, you know, he just, he is the worst at his insults. You know what I mean? I I mean, Tao has some pretty good insults and comebacks himself, but nothing, you know, he's not Oscar Wilde just having the most clever, witty, off-the-cuff thing I've ever heard. You know, he has a decent response, but it's like every time he says anything, it's like, uh, Harry has never known how to insult someone before. He's just completely like lost if anyone responds back. I mean, that is entertaining. But but I think that um, at this point in the show, you know, Nick and Charlie are much better off just in the sense that their communication has improved so much. I mean, and that makes sense as well, right? When you first are kind of feel have feelings for someone and especially for Charlie not knowing Nick was gay and Nick himself not even knowing he was gay or bisexual, right? That's really the awkward phase, right? But then once once they know that they like each other, then there's like some trust there and then they can really be open and have some of those conversations where they tell everyone, hey, this is exactly how I'm feeling. It's confusing. It's messy, but I'm being totally straight up with you. So I think that is definitely a good direction for the two of them. But now, you know, as we're approaching the end of the season, I'm, I'm so curious, like, how things are going to wrap up. I, I've, I've had, I feel like, multiple times throughout this show, just this uneasy feeling that something was going to go terribly wrong. But honestly, so far, I don't want to jinx it by saying this out loud, but it's just... You know, my thoughts watching the show so far, uh, things have turned out fairly well for the most part. I mean, there have been some complications, some kind of melodramatic moments and miscommunications, misreading the situation. But overall, there's been a lot of feel good moments as well. So I'm like, how is this season going to wrap up? Is it going to ra wrap up on like a big cliffhanger? Is it going to wrap up with a sweet note? Is it going to wrap up with something tragic or something just dramatic and unpleasant that's going to go down? I don't even know which one I would want. I mean, a cliff cliffhanger season endings are pretty good. And a, another reason why, if it is a cliffhanger, that would be pretty cool is because the second season is out. So you don't even have to wait to watch that, right? So I feel like that's the one that, that I feel like would be the most interesting to me. But who knows? We will see what happens. As always, the full unedited reaction to these episodes, along with future episodes, are all up on Patreon. If you care to sign up and support me, thank you to everyone who does. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.